Hello friends, this video on matter and magnetism part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 14 before going ahead with part 15. Now let us go to the second magnetic element that is the magnetic dip. Magnetic dip is also sometimes known as the magnetic inclination and it is the angle that the total magnetic field of the earth makes with the surface of the earth. So till now we were talking about the vertical reference. So that is the axis. We, the, I mean, when we were talking about magnetic declination, what was our reference? With what we were measuring the angle, it was the axis which joins the true geographic north with the true geographic south, right? So that was our reference. And then we were keeping the compass and we were comparing the direction shown by the compass with that axis which joins the true north and true south. In this case, uh, my reference axis would be the surface of the earth. What we will do, we will place the compass and we will see the deviation or the direction which the compass shows with respect to the surface of the earth. That means, imagine this in a three-dimensional way. Your magnetic compass needle, it deflects not only in one plane, it is deflecting in two different planes. That means it is deflecting horizontally as well as it is deflecting up and down. That means the needle also has some vertical component that is it can move up and down as well. So when you place the needle anywhere on the surface of the earth and everywhere there is a component along the surface of the earth, so, the total magnetic field of the earth, this is given, shown by the needle. So, the deflection of the magnetic needle with respect to the surface of the earth, that is known as the magnetic dip. It is generally termed as dip inclination and denoted by a capital I. So, when I talk about inclination, we can understand it better in this way. Let us suppose that the red dot shows us the point where we place my magnetic needle. Right? Let us suppose this is where I place my magnetic needle. Now, what is the direction of the surface of the earth? This is the surface of the earth. The yellow line shows the surface of the earth. Now, what is the deflection that the needle will show? The needle will always point from north to south direction. Now, in the, when I place the needle here, the needle will point towards the south direction in the direction of the magnetic field, right? So the needle will point along the magnetic field, magnetic lines, sorry. Let us suppose this is my magnetic lines of force. So if I place the needle here, the where will the needle point? The needle will point like this. If I place the needle here, the needle will point like this. If I place the needle here, it will point like this. So as I keep changing the position of the needle, it will point to the direction along the direction of magnetic field because that magnetic field line is also going from north to south. So this angle is nothing but the angle of dip that is the magnetic dip. That means the angle between the direction given by the magnetic needle with respect to the surface of the earth. So in the previous case it was the direction given by the magnetic needle with respect to the true north-south direction. Right? So, these two are two different things. When, I, when we are talking about true north-south direction, it is talking about one component. When we are talking about the, the comparison with horizontal surface of the earth, it is another component because we need a three-dimensional three uh, uh, description to define the magnetic field of the earth at any point because the needle will deviate horizontally. The needle will also deviate vertically because it is a three-dimensional scenario, right? So, magnetic inclination will tell us the location of the magnetic north and south pole with respect to the true north pole and south pole. Magnetic dip will tell us the direction of the magnetic field with respect to the surface of the earth. So, now this magnetic dip will also change as we change the position. For example, in case of magnetic dip, if you look at it, now let us, if we take the magnetic needle somewhere here, in this case what happens, this yellow line is the surface of the earth, but in this case the needle will point somewhat like this. If you look at this magnetic line of force, I mean magnetic field line, 
so it is pointing like this so in this case if you see your uh, angle of dip increased i mean your magnetic dip increased so similarly so when we reach here that is almost near the magnetic poles we see that this angle of dip or the magnetic dip it becomes almost 90 degree similarly that is why at magnetic poles it is 90 degree now we come when we come down to equator now when we come down to equator here if you see the yellow line that is the surface of the earth and the direction given by your compass they are both parallel so the angle between them is zero degree so at magnetic equator the magnetic dip, dip becomes zero so at, at equator the magnetic dip is zero and as we go up the poles it becomes 90 degree so what do we conclude from the these two slides that at equator the magnetic dip as well as the magnetic dip, declination both are very small that is why at the equator the there is not much distinction between magnetic north and geographic north they both are almost the same right so so i hope you understood what is magnetic declination and what is magnetic dip and how do they vary from equator to poles right now let us look at the third element that is the horizontal component so from this we conclude that magnetic dip is different at different places on earth's surface because obviously it will differ right because at what different places on the earth's surface the direction of earth's surface will also change right and the direct direction given by the magnetic needle will also change therefore the dip will also change so let us now look at the third component that is the horizontal component. Horizontal component is nothing but the horizontal component of the earth's total magnetic field at any point. So what do I mean by earth's total magnetic field? It is nothing but the total magnetic field given by my compass, this one. This yellow lines, they, they were nothing but the horizontal surface of the earth. Whereas the blue lines represented the magnet, total magnetic field of the earth as given by the magnetic compass needle. So the horizontal component of this blue lines is known as the horizontal component of the earth. Right? Because this blue lines represent the total magnetic field of the earth. So it will have a horizontal component and a vertical component. So this horizontal and vertical component will be referred as the I mean will can be defined in this way for example let us suppose the blue lines represented in the last diagram is the total magnetic field of the earth which we denote as BE or we denote it as B let us say so this B will have a horizontal component and this will also have a vertical component. So let us suppose I denote the horizontal component as HE and the vertical component as ZE. So we can write down that the horizontal component will be equal to B cos I and the vertical component as B sin I because if you look at this figure you can see that this is my B and this is my I. Right. So if I talk about the horizontal component of the earth, it would be this component along this yellow line. And if I talk about the vertical component, it would be this component. Right. So if this is B, then this would be B cos I and this would be B sin I. That means this would be the horizontal component of the earth and this would be the vertical component of the earth. Right. So this horizontal component earth is the third magnetic element. So from this we can also write, let us say this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. So now if you divide equation 2 by equation 1, you will get tan i is equal to z e divided by h e. Right? So these three elements when taken together, that is the magnetic declination, magnetic dip and horizontal component of earth's magnetic field, these three things taken together will define completely the direction as well as magnitude of the total magnetic field of the earth at any point. At any point, if you know the declination, inclination as well as horizontal component, you can perfectly define the total magnetic field of the earth. Right? So I hope that I am able to explain you these three components because 
uh, it is not very easy to just read it in your textbooks and understand what it is. So that is why I gave you this diagram because I think this diagram would have helped you to understand the horizontal and vertical components of the Earth's magnetic field, the magnetic dip, as well as the magnetic declination, which I explained you in the previous slide. Right? Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.